Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This is a series of tutorials on scientific programming using Python. Now in the last tutorial, we saw how to make scatter plots and how to make it fancy. And in the previous tutorial, we took a one normal one dimension plot and we made features so that uh, it makes a little fancy. It, it looks much more fancy and informative. And now what we'll do is that we look at histograms. We look at histograms. Okay. Uh, to, uh, before we go to histograms, uh, I like to ta I like to talk about uh, one way of creating random numbers in Python. Okay, to create ra okay, uh, because the the example that we are going to use requires random num random numbers. Okay, so let's have a look at that, shall we? Okay, for that, what we need is that we need this command, we need this function called as mlab, we need numpy, at the same time we need uh, this uh, fun, uh, class called as mlab, or a function, okay, class I guess, it's class called as mlab, okay, so let me copy this one, okay, copy this one, and let me paste it in our spider library, and that's it, mlab is available, okay, now our mlab is available, okay mlab is actually a numerical python functions written for compatibility with matlab commands with the same names okay i'll explain you guys there's a separate software called as matlab okay mathematical matrix laboratory that's what they call it okay and there there are a lot of functions build on build in matlab matlab which does a lot of fancy features like plotting the probability distribution function of certain uh, probably distribute probably distributed functions and several other stuff okay over there over over there okay and uh, what uh, this memlab does is that it has the same functions that are developed for developed for python they are developed for python okay with the same names so if you want to do a, if you want to get a normal uh, pdf if you want to get a normal distribution curve or a some or a geometrical distribution curve or something some other kind of probability distributions and several other plots and all okay what you have to do is that uh, include this include this class called as mlab and that's it if you are a matlab user okay uh, doing that part, part is very very simple in python you can just directly use the command that you use in matlab over here I mean not the actual matlab commands the features that are available in matlab can or can or replicate replicable here in those names that's it not, it's not that difficult okay that's it now what i'm doing is that for in, in this example i'm creating a set of random numbers normally distributed between normally distributed with a mean of 100 and 50, with a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15 okay i give you the context of it you see uh, uh, they say uh, a lot of research, a lot of research, and lo a lot of studies say that uh, hu the IQ test that is used for measuring the human's intellect, uh, human's intellectual quotient, they say that uh, the human, an average, on an average, a human has an intelligence of an I mean, IQ of hundred. Okay, and uh, you might find a you might find a lot of variations up and down, up and down on it. So what they're saying is that. Uh, statistically, the human IQ IQ uh, for human IQ uh, follows a probability distribution. It's a normally it's a probability distribution that corresponds to a Gaussian distribution or normal distribution. Okay, whose mean is centered around 100 and has a standard deviation of 15. So if you guys want to know more about what how a normal distribution looks like, you can just Google it up and check it in Wikipedia or something. That will be that will be that will give you more more information about it. The point I'm trying to make here is that the human IQ, they say, it's normally distributed. So if you take a random population, if you take a population of 100 people or 1000 people and um, calculate the IQs of each and everybody, each and everybody, okay, and if you look, and if plot, and if you plot how they look like, you may get a histogram something like this, or you have, or you have a red curve, the, or if you have a very, very, very large set of values, you may have a red curve, you may have a red curve like this. Indicating that the peak I most of the people will have the maximum IQ of 100 People will have a maximum IQ close to 100 whereas those above 100 and below 100 will be will be forming a very small fraction Will be forming a very small fraction. So I'm just replicating the comments over here. Okay Okay, let me copy this 
and run this okay now what i'm doing here is i am setting the mean of the distribution m it, it, as m as 100 and the uh, standard deviation to be 15 so m comma s equals 100 comma 15 make sure that 100, this 100 goes to m and 15 goes to x and then what i do i create a variable call uh, create a uh, numpy variable called as iq numpy array called as iq which is actually uh, which is actually a set of random numbers okay normally distributed between the uh, over the, on the uh, about the mean hun about the mean m about mean 100 uh, standard uh, i mean uh, with the standard deviation of 15 given by s and uh, and you will have 1000 points so iq will be uh, will be a, will be a collection of 1000 points over here and if you see all of them they are just random numbers between a bit uh, random uh, normal uh, random numbers following normal distribution okay <sighs> okay that's about that now we created created that now look now look at now let's draw the histogram for that we need to set the number of bins okay now uh, let me copy this and let me plot it okay the basic idea of histograms is that you need you need to make a head count you need to make a head count okay now uh, let's you need to make a head count of how many values are there fine now so that uh, so if you have a range let's say you need to break you need to break the range into smaller smaller small 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 uh, sub ranges so that you can count the values and plot them in so for instance if you have a range between minus uh, if you have a range between uh, you have a range between say 0 to 100 okay you can group them as uh, you can have subgroups like 0 to 10 as one group 10 to 20 as another group 20 to 30 as another group so on and so forth so you can have uh, multiple subgroups like that okay and if you use uh, if you if you make groups like 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 and all the number of groups will be very very large on the other hand if i set the groups to be 0 to 20 0 to 20 to 40 and 40 to 50 like that what happens is that the groups will be much shorter in number much smaller in number okay it'll be much smaller in number so for my data since i'll be having thousand values i'm setting the number of bins to be 50 so i'll be having 50 50 groups in total that is given by num underscore bins okay <coughs> now what i do is that now we'll have the most important line in the entire program this line okay what it does is that it uh, the pld dot hist plots the histogram histogram okay and iq will be the iq will be the x axis <laughs> iq will be the x axis and uh, will be, I, mean, I sorry iq will be the values that are being used for plotting the indiv individual peaks and number of bins that will be used will be used to give the y axis values okay will be used to give the will be used for partitioning the partitioning the groups okay iq is actually will be the value that is that will be used and bins will number num underscore bins will be the number of groups you will have made it and i i'll explain about normed one and face color here face color is simple it just sets the it just sets the color of the histograms to be histogram here i said face color to be green so the histogram will be green in color that's it and norm i'll explain that in a minute so okay and now when you do when you plot this function when you plot this function it is going to return three values n bins and patches now i explain now n is the number of counts in every group let's say you have four entries between zero and four entries between uh, zero and ten okay now four four entries between zero and ten and then six entries between uh, six entries between ten and twenty twenty entries between twenty and thirty okay we need an, so we need an array that uh, that has a collection of all these number of entries and number of counts in each and every group okay that is actually given by n okay counts uh, counts give the actual no numerical count of number of values present in each group okay and then bins gives an array of edges array of edges let's say if let's say if you want in the, uh, let's say you want to have a uh, you have a range of numbers between 0 and 100 and if let's say you have 10 groups in between them so you'll have 11 edges 
if you have only one group you'll have two edges one part starting edge and an ending edge similarly if you have a uh, a hundred group hundred uh, groups you will have a uh, hundred and one edges okay so so uh, so hundred and one edges hundred and one edges okay so that's what it means bins returns an array of edges and patches these are just other variables for making the histogram plot but the patches is not necessary for us so we can just leave it now let me explain about normed what norm does is that norm does is that if it is set to 1 or true or if it's set to true what happens is that uh, it just divides the it divides the each and every count each and every count value you get in n it divides that by the total number of entries total number of entries in i total number of entries in the value that to be histogram pl- histogramically plotted and then returns and then return some kind of a probability or a fraction probability or a fraction okay so here let's say in each group we have counts like 10 15 20 and every 25 30 like that and all okay now the total number of entries in the uh, total number of entries is 1000 so if we set norm equ- norm to be equal to 1 or true what happens is that all the individual entries in all the individual entries in uh, n will be divided by 1000 all the individual entries in n will be divided by 1000 and uh, you will have okay divided divided by 1000 and you will have a fraction less, whose value is less than 1 okay and if this value is th- is said to be 0 or false then it will get, get return the actual number of counts so here since i set this to be norm equals 1 you will be getting actual you will be getting fractions or probability like that otherwise you'll get them to be actual values so let's plot this up okay so we have n comma bins comma patches equals plt dot hist okay and then iq comma norm equals 1 <coughs> norm equals 1 base color equal okay equals green okay press the if i press enter there you have it the histogram histogram looks like this okay the histogram histogram looks like this okay um uh okay and if you look at the uh, look at the axis the axis the y axis is in fractions like this okay now what i do is that let me break this up and i set to norm to be 0 okay press enter and if you look the histogram you will have actual count values over here instead of fractions instead of fractions okay and if you see the histo- the uh, since um the histogram is not proper yet it assumed its own set of groupings over here despite the fact that we gave we gave groups over here that's because we need to break it uh, for that we need a little more fancy stuff we need to do a little more fancy stuff to break it so what are we go- what am i going to do is that i am going to uh, okay let me just uh, set this to be noun 1 okay set this to be noun 1 and then i'm going to put this find this value l which is actually uh, which is actually which is actually this i'll explain what's going on l sta- l is actually will be an array will be an array okay which will have the normal distribution normal pa- normal uh, normal fun- normal probability density density function the probability density function of the normal distribution Okay, it's going to recreate m lat dot normal PDF. Norm PDF is going to recreate that using the number of edges, the bins, and using the mean uh, mean value and the standard deviation value. What you can say is that this will have the normal distribution function built into it, and this will be the x-axis. This will be the values used to get the y-axis and all. That's it. It's going to plot that. So when we uh, so when we plot that, okay, when we copy this. and the superimpose it on the y superimpose on the normal distribution normal distribution 
you get a curve like this but it's still it's not that clean and neat <coughs> not that clean and neat so what you're going to do is that uh, let me set the let me add a little more of a little more fancy features to it okay the, let me copy the axis labels and everything copy the axis labels and everything okay plot the plot looks fine okay but uh, the groups haven't been done yet um, groups haven't been done yet so let's see if I were to uh, plot the title and everything Let's see whether this makes the plot look a little more fancy. Okay, now if you look at that, the plot is still like, still like this. It's not that good. It's not that good. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's make this a little um, better. Now this is how you get a histogram and a curve on top of it superimposed. Okay. But the bins are not that good. Uh, I'll, I'll see what's what's the reason. Num underscore bins is fine. I guess did I use num underscore bins? Oh, I forgot. Uh, now I get it. I haven't used num underscore bins in the models in the, in the program, so it kind of assumed it to be like assumed it to be g gradual. So what I do, assumed it, it, it assumed it's on its own. So let me copy all this and uh, paste it over here, and then run this. There you have it. The plot looks better. The plot looks better. It does. I forgot to use the num in bins option, so that's why it is like this. But anyway, it looks better right now. Okay, and now if you just uh, if you just uh, open your figure and see the histogram plot, you will get you will get a histogram plot like this. It's same. Okay, like this. Okay, that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next tutorial.